-hmm. And then that, that raises a question. Some of your tests look like they're all done on new timber, on new bamboo. Yeah. Have you looked at some of the parameters of the strength, etc., on old bamboo? Only moisture. Only moisture is the, is the variable that we've looked at but no aging, for example. Only mo moisture content has is, is been the, the aspect with, with, we've looked at. Yeah, but no aging, and it's a fair point. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for that. Which part of Africa are you working? Oh, the, some islands off the west coast. Right, so it's a very wet weather, or? Uh, it's just tropical. Tropical. Rainforests, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, thanks very Which much. Which encourages good growth of bamboo. Right, yeah, that's right. It grows really fast, doesn't it? It's like wheat. Yeah. Thank you. Catherine. Uh, I this, um, I, I, my main concern would be um, the cost of steel connections, just because that's, I would think that would be very expensive in this context. Um, well, let alone, I guess you're saying you provide a kit. But I guess, you know, have you, how did you look at indigenous forms of bamboo construction? which might be different materials to, for the whole structure. You see what I mean? You're not using steel, you're using something actually mm. available mm. Um, that might, because is it a sustainable design if people are having to get something from somewhere else? I guess that would be my main concern about it. Right, so you're talking about the connections or are you talking about the structure? Well, just the, the connections in that context. Right. You know, if they have to require special connections mm. from somewhere else, is it a, but as you said, that just locally they are Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. They've got resources, they possibilities for doing that. that but, um, if, if you looked at, did you look at other types of bamboo construction that might have used other materials? I just thought I'd stand up um, to kind of help answer this because I don't know whether you have looked at other stuff or not. But actually, um, in India, we did have that thought, and when we realised that it was going to be a huge problem getting this bit of kit and um, connecting things using that we thought our first thought was okay so what other bindings can we get have they got any string or anything like that to try and use something that's traditional and then we realized that we'd not seen anything like that out there on bamboo scaffolding or other huts that they had in their villages and actually they don't have a local word for string or twine or whatever it was really difficult to explain one what it was and then once we got to the market they didn't actually have it anywhere they have um you know the really thin um, blue string um, that, in fact, Bridget Jones uses to cook leeks in? <laughs> um, that, that kind of string, they had that, but that wouldn't have been much mm. use at all. And or lashing or anything. They um, bolted that um, and used nails and things like that okay, yeah, in the area. Nails, to me, seems like a much more common, obviously, you know, thing that you could get. It is, but actually, if you... Because what we could also see from that is that if you do bolt or nail, you in, you tend to in, um, induce a crack in the bamboo, and actually they were you could see lots of structures failing like that. So we were trying not to put holes into the bamboo. You did see that we had to for the base there, and that's what we resorted to in the end. But we were trying to clamp it with what we could get, and they do have an abundance of thin sheet steel, and it's not expensive in India. So that's just my experience of it. Mm. Yeah, I was going to add that uh, India is one of the world's leader steel, steel producers. So um, obviously, very poor people buying this this material. It might be a push for them, but because of bigger ashram and, and educational organizations like that, probably the, that would be easy easier for yeah. them. Yeah. Easy at least. Recycling. Quite well, well uh, uh, quite interesting is interestingly, reading articles and talking to people who who work on uh, you know sustainability and, and NGOs working with with these type of people, uh, local people, the people we are we are addressing here, our, our subject under study, they tend to be the the group of of people who recycle the most. You know, they make the most out of what they've got around them. And definitely, they could, they could recycle things that they've got around. Yeah, no, that's a very People interesting. Have at recycling tin cans for reinforcing timber jointing. Right. Yes. No, I'm not surprised to hear that. Yes, I'm. I'm sure they do. Yeah. 
this gentleman you has. Have connections which only use the screen. Because I'm used to seeing a lot in Hong Kong every time they go back from the maze. Flashing, yeah. But they, yeah, they clad entire modern buildings. Yes, right. Just bamboo scaffolding. Yep. And I don't see any. They, they use lash, lashing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, lashing. The problem with lashing <coughs> is that the way I understand it, you might you might know more than I do. Okay, so you stop me if I say something stupid. But lashing, uh, the way I understand it, you need to be quite skilled <coughs> to do it repetitively. So if you want to reproduce the same thing over and over again, you would need to be quite skilled. Yeah. So the con the metal connection that you could just stuck to your bamboo and wrap around is something that even myself can do. Something very, someone very, very, you know, low skilled and I mean, I doesn't know very much about things. It down a bit, just why they find that they can untie or cut it. I don't know exactly. That's right. Yeah, um, but uh, our I just point. That would be. Yeah. An option. Perhaps, yeah. Rather than playing with steel at all, that takes away. Yeah. The yeah. Finding yeah, some kind some of. Training. Yeah, that would. Yeah. Perhaps <coughs> train that. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a fair point. But I, I also uh, I admit that in the beginning of our developing our, our initial prototype, we, re we really wanted to walk away from lashing because it really uh, involved <laughs> a, have a skilled person there and hiring someone to do that for you, that definitely puts the, the money up. But training people to do lashing, why not? You, you know, it's, it's another way of keeping the community going, yeah? Thank you. Thanks for that. Very fair question. Yeah, and I was told people in New Zealand, indigenous people in New Zealand as well, I've been told that they use things like that. The, the honest answer is we haven't done it yet, but it's a fair, fair point, how indigenous people, I guess a lashing will be another, probably will be, will be a solution because as Hong Kong people, they, you've got really, really tall these structures made out of bamboo. They use a scaffolding for, you know, like window cleaning and even construction of the proper brick and mortar building. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. <coughs> Very fair. Yes, sir. I uh, just want to say that I've, I've recently been uh, in India, mm -hmm. and I've seen a lot of this scaffolding done with uh, bamboo. And yeah, they do lash it, and a lot of times just with uh, uh, like a rope made out of coconut. All right. Yeah. Shells, okay. Yeah. Which looks crazy. Amazing. Uh, but it works. But it works. Uh, you know, yeah, I guess you would have to uh, train somebody to lash it to properly. properly and, and safely. I actually wanted to write a similar question like about the traditional uh, way because they they do have a traditional uh, way of constructing with bamboo or other things like palm leaves for the roofs. They can come up with incredibly complex meshes mm -hmm. of palm leaves, and they, they they actually are waterproof or kind of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, I think it would be also um, a good way, if you get into that also, a good way to make this type of construction more acceptable for the people from there. The locals. Because if you tell yes. them it's like it takes something from the traditional way of building. Yes, you're very right. Yeah. You're very right because they need to accept this as theirs. Mm -hmm. they, need to, they need to have this sense of ownership and using traditional, maybe call it evolved, method yeah. from traditional ones that probably that's a, a way as a way into you know a way of cracking this nut like, like you said culturally mm -hmm. now they are mm -hmm. more, uh, they tend to use newer materials or they tend to like copy or whatever because they want to be yes 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 but actually they have a very rich traditional uh, know-how and, and I, I know uh, <coughs> some architects from from India and they uh, they are a lot concerned into this, mm -hmm. like getting back the traditional way of building yeah. there. So it could mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. something to look into. Absolutely. When you were Thank talking you. about durability, that it would last for s five, six years, these steel connections, are they easily disassembled and reassembled? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is the, this that's that's the plan that's that you can yeah. recycle for your next, your next hat. Yeah. Yeah. More, yes. Boric acid, yeah. What method did you use to actually do the treatment? They, it's a quite um, pristine <laughs> one. I mean, quite, quite, quite primitive. I'm sorry, quite primitive is what I mean. Well, uh, they basically use star. You know, you, Lara, Lara did I this. Did. You I didn't, didn't right? Um, we didn't treat ours, and yeah, they, they don't treat what they use out where I was. So. Mm -hmm. In Bigan Ashram, they, they, they 
pour boric acid. Uh, they kind of have like with swimming pools and they have these this bamboo poles there for a, for a few we days, even weeks. Or they have tar, you know, like petroleum-based uh, leftovers, call it that way. And, and they use it to, to kind of create a layer, <coughs> a waterproof layer, waterproofing layer in the bamboo to avoid like bug infection and, and, and things like that. Yeah, actually, I, uh, if you want to Google, Google um, YouTube this, Put, go, to, go to YouTube and, and, and key in uh, boric acid bamboo treatment and you've got amazing videos there. Health and safety is a is <laughs> shocking, you can imagine. People dealing with boric acid, no gloves on, no goggles, nothing. Oh, it's really, it's incredible. But um, there's, there's so there are some videos, at least there, there were some videos up to maybe a year ago uh, on YouTube on how they do boric acid treatment and tar treatment, if you're interested. Thank you. And is that sort of widespread or only in certain it seems communities or certain... Um, kind of in all the communities, everyone's treating their own bamboo, or is it generally... Um, I know that the community around Bigan Ashram in uh, in that place they they do it they do it traditionally you know they've done they've been doing it for years and years I don't know how widespread this is like say throughout India or throughout the Far East I'm not sure about that but definitely this is something that they they do it themselves without you know so external no 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 this is something they do they they did they've done already for for years it's part of the traditional know-how okay thank you. Sir? Yeah, yeah I'm like, I think it's really interesting, you know, using bamboo. Um, personally, I, I, it excites me. It's like a really good material. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I um, like I worked <laughs> um, on a project in my third year um, in university, and I looked into kind of little connections and how you could kind of treat the material and how you could kind of bend it and use it as a structural um, material. It's got great properties. Um, I don't know if you've looked at like an architect called um, Simon Velez. Yes. He's like a grow your own house. Yeah, grow your own <laughs> the, own he's own got these amazing. The the structures are amazing, aren't yeah. they? They're, yeah. They're amazing, and it's like I think you made a point about the kind of feeling towards bamboo. It's kind of like it's 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 something that's seen as just the poor man's lumber or the poor man's material, but I think it it could be changed definitely into more of a kind of an aesthetic that. That's right. A lot of people, especially in wealthier parts, could actually um, use um, and kind of be proud of, it. Uh, and it could become like a staple for uh, in a particular um, region mm -hmm. um, of the world. So I think that I mean, looking at modular elements as you're doing is is brilliant. I I was more when I think when I was thinking in my project, I was thinking about kind of combining um, more, I guess, like our industrial methods like steel or more durable item um, connections um, and actually trying to create a sustainable process that would make it more um, uh, ideal for almost prefabricating bamboo elements um, in a, in a, under kind of factory conditions mm -hmm. and actually seeing if that type of process would be better because you can actually have more kind of um, right. you know, okay. tolerance over, over, over what's happening and you can treat it, you can create um, uh, more, more kind of sound structures that you mm -hmm. can either export or it could be done locally mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you can create kind of communities. So it's like an integrated product almost, yeah, right? Like you product. just have your, your bamboo house. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's grand. Yeah, but I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I think mm -hmm. that is the way forward. And if we can sort out these problems we've got, like, you know, like bulk issues in case with humidity, uh, mechani mechanical, structural, Properties, uh, etc. We would have we would have a, an amazing solution there, but sustainable. Uh, it requires less energy to 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 treat, to pa fabricate, to, to maintain, etc. So, yes, a little bit of work is still to be done among all of us, and but definitely the future is bright, yeah. as they say. Thank you. Thanks very much. Anyone got any more questions? Well, thank you. Thanks very much for coming. Cheers. Thank you.